On today's episode of Gathering the Kings. Try harder, faster, sooner. Starting earlier and believing in yourself. Who knows where I'd be if, if I'd started even earlier. You are listening to Gathering the Kings with Chaz Wolf, featuring fellow seven, eight, and even nine figure business owners who have real battle scars from business and life, but have prevailed as the king that they are designed to be. We welcome high performing entrepreneurs to the stage in order to reveal the real of the real on what it takes to build a successful business today. We dissect the good and bad decisions they've made along the way that give a true and accurate picture of the journey of success and how you too can get there. Through this dialogue, you will learn the value of growing your network and surrounding yourself with power players and kings like today's guest. Grab your pen and notebook because we're about to dive in. What's up, everybody? I'm Chaz Wolf, Gathering the Kings podcast. Today, I have a guest, Jesse Summerlin here on the King stage. How you doing, brother? Doing great. How are you? You know, I'm wonderful, man. It's Monday. We were just talking, going back and forth a little bit on a couple of different uh, topics of business. I had to hurry up quick and hit the recording button because you were already talking about business basics and starting all kinds of businesses and getting, getting me fired up. I had to hurry up and quick and do it. But I know you've got lots of things going on in your world, as do I. We're going to have an incredible conversation here today. But tell us what kind of businesses that you got, brother. So the the big one, the one that started the longest ago, and I guess I suppose have had the most success, it would be a construction company. So that's dual roofing and exteriors. And we serve the DFW Metroplex. Well, right. From that, we've, that's still going great, still growing it. And in the process, we've been doing some other businesses that are sort of related to it. So shoulder to shoulder. I kind of help the real estate. We have some rental properties in the, in the Metroplex, picking up additional ones as sort of opportunities present itself. Yeah. And then doing some uh, uh, STR stuff up in Oklahoma as well, awesome. the BRBO, Airbnb stuff, which is, yeah. it's all kind of related in one way or another. Obviously right. the construction company can help service the other ones, keep costs low, yeah. turnover, sure. prioritize, and uh, have a marketing agency as well. Wow. And... This year, we'll be adding an insurance component to things okay. that'll kind of help, in my opinion, have everything pretty well-rounded yeah. where it's all helping each other. So yeah. some force cool multipliers, spectrum. but uh, kind of adjacent industries where uh, it's all kind of growing now. And Yeah, I love actually, so just a, I mean, not that this is like a, a super hidden thing, but sometimes when you're growing multiple businesses like that, what what works, what you're doing, so I'm kind of more pointing out for the listener than anything, is that when you have an individual and you serve them with a remodel or a roof, or we were just talking about solar. I've got, I'm having solar installed here today. Actually, one of the guys in our Gathering the Kings Mastermind group, his company here, the Royal Roofing and Solar in KC, woot woot. But all that to say, you've got this individual who has a lot of needs with their home or insurance or whatever. And so if you can, if you can develop a customer, which is what you've done, and then you recognize some of the other needs that maybe you can help them with. It's a good, it's a good horizontal way to be able to grow your business. If, if, especially if you've gone deep and you've kind of tapped the well, if you will, in your area with that one task. And now you can help that same customer. You don't have to grow the customer list anymore. You got the list. Yep. Yeah. Sell them another thing. The, yeah, what we do typically is at least the way we sell is it's a, we're developing relationships. These are lifelong customers, you know, it's a value add. So that's right. If we can have a full stack process where they're like, you are the guy that we go to for all of these things, it's it's great. So, you know, apply the same kind of approach with doing the best that we can, giving them exactly what they need. But, you know, it's 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 not it's not the cheapest price. It's not the the most expensive product. It's it's the best value. So yeah, giving them you know, once once they're plugged in, they understand they're like, look, the customers that we develop are they're they're folks that that understand. You know, I might be paying a little bit more, but I'm getting a lot out of it. And, yeah. you know, we can, we can take them along and give them exactly what they need. It's, it's, it's been a good approach. It's sort of the long-term approach. And we're, we're not trying to get it in, get out, get paid. It's, right. you know, we're, we're doing the, the right thing and the business follows. It's kind of, it, it, it seems like a no-brainer, but yeah. believe it or not, especially in like roofing or construction, uh, there's a lot of competitors that have, it's, it hasn't seemed to click yet. So, yep. Oddly enough, it's still unique and it, it, it pays dividends. So Yeah, uh, unfortunately, in those industries, really, I guess it's in all industries because we're people, but even in construction services, home services, there's just this <clears throat> lack of awareness that it's not, you know, construction that I'm in, it's people that I'm in. And, and when you understand that piece, then it's like, okay, now I, I can build a real relationship 
I can use certain soft skills that typically maybe are looked down upon. And, and so what, when you don't have those, then it becomes transactional. So when I can learn how to speak, when I can learn how to add value, when I can learn how to maybe even handhold, which is mm -hmm. really just meaning like you provide a premium experience at the end of the time. So, so yeah, they actually end up paying you more and they love it. They become yes. raving fans, right? Like I'm thankful that I paid you more because you took excellent care of me and I don't have to worry about you disappearing on me. Right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Especially We're... in construction, especially in roofing and, 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 and in solar, solar is not like all across the country yet, but another industry where people just in and out, in and out, in and out. Right. 100%. Yeah. We're not going anywhere. They, they, they trust us. And we, we have a, a, like I said, I mentioned the marketing component. We, we get a lot of new opportunities, yeah. but our referrals are fantastic because, you know, each one of our customers has had a, a, like a great time, a great experience. You know, they're, they're sort of screaming our names from the rooftop. Everybody likes having a guy and we're their guy. So yeah. it's, it makes it really easy as long as we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. So, yeah, it's, it's so unique to how you described how it's still unique to do business like this. You would have thought that more people caught onto this. What I have found actually is there's a lot of guests that I have on the show. We're coming up on 300 episodes, but a good majority, like I would say over 80, maybe even 90% of the guests. And then for sure, everybody inside of our seven and eight figure mastermind group, we have this similarity where it's like, I, I'm actually more concerned about doing it right. Knowing that I'm going to be around forever, building something sustainable, something that matters to my family, something that I get to help you. And then not just transact and be gone but like i'm i'm your guy like all these things that you're talking about it's like this grateful but not done kind of language that we use within gathering the kings we're just regular guys but we're like crushing it you know it when it, it seems like a no-brainer once once the sort of the light bulb has gone off but uh, and at first it might not seem like it's paying off but right sticking to it it you know you start it's like rolling that little snowball over time yeah. it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger that's right and you, you you know, after a couple of years, uh, you might, it might feel like grinding away, but oh my gosh, does it pay dividends because you get that critical mass. And then all of a sudden everything starts coming back and you're like, this is it. This is, you know, I'm glad I stuck to it. And That's right. you know, the proof is in the pudding and it doesn't happen overnight. But then once, once it starts coming in, you're just like, it almost right. seems obvious. Yeah, it is. It is. It, it. It's just funny how, like what you're saying is that it's only obvious when it's obvious. It seems obvious now, but because when we started, it just felt right. But unfortunately, there's just a lot of people that that aren't thinking long term is really what it comes down to. So yep. uh, we, we've kind of tapped on this question already. We've, we've gotten into some really good stuff, like super fast here, which is great. My first question is always around the why, a, a deeper purpose. We've, we've kind of danced around this even a little bit around I mean, why you're building certain things and doing it with integrity and all these things. But at the end of the day, Jesse, you've been successful is the point but yet you're still building. You're opening up new divisions of your companies or portfolio companies this year even. You're here on the podcast. Why? Why are you doing all this even after all your success? So one, I'm pretty competitive and it's not even necessarily competing with other people. It's competing with myself. So yeah, well, I like to, you know, I'm always kind of trying to push outside my comfort zone, set goals and then achieve those goals and then push further. I don't want to limit myself. I've, I, back in the day, you know, you kind of learn the hard way, I think. And fortunately, over time, I've kind of learned that a, a lot of the things that were inhibiting growth were were my own issues or proclivities or whatever you want to call it. And as I've gotten older and and kind of really, you know, you can hit up against walls, you, after a while, as long as you have that mindset and you continue to try and learn and grow, right. uh, the proof is in the pudding. Again, I say that I don't want it to sound cliche or whatever, but even if it's small wins, those sort of build on each other and, you know, it remodeling my own, my first house and then just seeing like, oh, oh my gosh, I can do that. And then the, the dividends that it paid and then just finding something new, some new goal to achieve. And then it, it continues to build and like, okay, well, I can do that. That was a piece of cake. It seemed like an insurmountable task, but right. I got it. So let's try something harder. Let's aim the sights higher. That's right. And it keeps going. So the, the competitive competitiveness with myself, I'll, that's a, that's a big deal. It's also fun for me. I don't, I don't know what it is. Maybe I'm like a glutton for pain, but I really enjoy doing these things. Yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of neat. And I'm a, my own boss. So having, being able to be the, the captain of my own ship, 
sort of steering the outcome of things. I, I like to be a doer, not to have things done to me. So yeah, it's, yeah. A lot of relatable things there. I think that the listener can pull out and go, yep, that's me. Yep, that's me. I know I heard several things in there that I can agree with as well. You know, it's funny that <clears throat> that little piece of glutton for pain. You know, I just settled in my spirit maybe a few, two, three, five years ago. I don't know, but I've, I'm just putting language to it in the last probably two years that I'm a builder, you know, and okay, fine. Yes. Whether that could be actual remodels that one of my portfolio companies does or, or real estate, we've done flips or we've built, you know, projects. I'm a builder, just like when you define what a builder is, building teams, building businesses, building individuals, building leaders, building my wife, building my children, like I'm just a builder. And guess what? That's it just difficult. <laughs> it sounds fun. Like, oh, Chaz, you're a builder. Like, that's great. But really what it is, is that I love the process because there's a lot of components that go into building. There's a lot of like good days and bad days and like some things that move the needle a little bit and some things that move the needle a lot of bit. And you're like, whoa, that was awesome. And then it's like, you get smacked in the face again. So it's like, there's this really clear dynamic of what you said, a little bit of pain, but I kind of like it, you know? So <laughs> it's another challenge one after the other. And so I'm just resonating to, I'm a builder. This is what I do in every aspect of my life. And actually you probably read to, read to, relate to this. Let me know what you think, but when I like settled that, then I was like, just okay. I was like, I'm not upset about the, the default or the pain in the moment. I just know it's part of the process of building something. Would you agree sure, with that? Absolutely. Yeah. Sometimes you get, you can get smacked in the face on something. There, there's always losses, especially when you're sort of pushing that boundary or getting outside your comfort zone. That's right. Uh, those are great learning opportunities. But you know, every once in a while, if you're just like, because you, you can't always be positive and happy and like right. on all the time. It's, you know, we're all human. That's not really the case. It might appear that way for some folks, but that's right. reality, the background of it is no, that's not it. You know, every once in a while you need an easy win. And for me as a, in, in you as a builder, um, I like, I like things that are tangible. So literally building something with my hands and seeing the result going from nothing to something, right. That that's great because it's, I've showed myself, I've, I've made progress. And that's, it, it, it helps rebuild that momentum to get sort of back at it and, you know, pat myself on the back. So it's, yeah. it's good. It's necessary. And, but, but I love doing it and creating things, especially from nothing, whether it's, it's, it's a concept or, or, or whatever it's, yeah. it's a lot of fun and it's very rewarding. So that's right. Yeah. It's that reward, you know, physically or not. Cause I definitely don't put myself in a category of a handy individual. So you creating something with your hands looks different. For me, I'm, I'm creating something usually with my mind or maybe some, some, some energy, you know, of, of putting things together, but it's still the same thing, mm -hmm. whether it's someone else in, in a, in a portfolio company doing the work and me looking at it going, Ooh, that's beautiful. We did that. Right. Like maybe it was my thought, my vision, but, but, and you did the craftsmanship and that's great. And together we're, we're in it, but, um, it's that it, it is the reward. You're right. And that's why we keep, that's why we keep coming back over and over because the war, the reward is, uh, is greater than the pain. And so, Handless. all right, let's, let's, I want to get into your story, man. Like you got a lot going on. You, you've given us already like just nugget after nugget after nugget. We could stop the podcast right now and somebody could just be like, dude, that guy was awesome. <laughs> so I want to know, just give us a little bit of the journey. Like how did you start a business? How did, how's it unfolded? Give us a couple of minutes just on your story. So if, if I take you way, way back from the, the very beginning, yeah. I would say, believe it or not, I'm a, I'm a, I'm not a, an extrovert. It's, I would say I'm more of an introvert or maybe some, yeah. somewhere in the middle, but certainly not an extrovert. If I'm in like a group of people trying to network with strangers or whatever, although I'm having fun, although I'm, you know, pushing myself out there, it's exhausting. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, starting from, from very little, little league, I, you know, to, to raise money, we're, we're selling candy bars, you know, single right. digits, yep. the little, little guy getting out there, trying to get people to, to give me money for something that they didn't ask for. Right. And it's, it's tough, especially when you're a little guy talking to adults or whatever, trying to get their money. But like the, just the experience of something simple like that, where, you know, I could go door to door and knock a, knock, you know, a couple dozen doors, maybe get a couple candy bars, but you know, you're developing your pitch, you're, you're, you're learning to, to get outside your comfort zone. You're learning simple things like that. And then I'm like, okay, well, let's, let's sort of fish with dynamite. So post up at the grocery store and with a little booth and have the customers come to me and then uh -huh. sell some stuff, but a like with leverage. Yeah. I didn't want to do it. It was terrifying for me. And, but it was, it was a great learning experience. 
And yeah. taking a little experience like that at that sort of age and seeing that, again, you're, you're getting something tangible, like, holy moly, like, look what's happening. Like, this is really yeah. great. It's something I didn't want to do or didn't think I could do, but now I've right. done it. And literally my whole life has, has been something sort of along those lines, you know, mowing, starting a little lawn mowing company before I was old enough to just get a, a real job. Right. <laughs> and, you know, then it sort of builds on, on that kind of stuff. And plus I'm all over the place. And on this podcast, I'll probably be all over the place. I got a little bit of deep ADD. I am dyslexic. So I've had to kind of overcome certain, yeah. you'd consider them obstacles. But honestly, I, I, to reframe it, I consider them more of an asset because as a result, having to compensate for certain things, I've, I've naturally developed skills that other people might not have. And right. it makes it, those sort of things make it easier, even just simply reframing it and not using it as an excuse to not do well, kind That's of, right. you know, flip it around and try and do, do more with it. Going back to the, the kind of, I'm all over the place in college or it was between high school, college, you know, I was, I was, we're make I was making some money, had, had jobs, having fun. They're like, what can I do to get a little bit extra beer money or something like that? I late night infomercial. So there's some, <laughs> they're selling like some garbage, a hundred knives for a hundred dollars. I'm like, okay, this seems like a great idea. I just, I bought the knives. I was bored. I did a couple Craigslist posts and I just, I made these, I sold these, you these flipped box them. of junky knives and swords and whatever. And I probably 10 x my money. It was, it wasn't anything other than sort of an experiment. I That's do right. not recommend doing this. And it was a complete waste of my time, but it was interesting. I learned a lot from it. And the, the, just little experiences like that, as you kind of are on the entrepreneurial path, yeah, you, um, you learn a lot from them. So I would say any experience, even if it's like ridiculous or mundane, you're learning something from it, especially if it's a failure. The failures, I would say I've learned a lot from those. Those are the ones that the, the painful things are the ones you remember that stick with you most. You don't, you're not having to do it a lot of times That's right. in order for it to really make an impact. So I don't consider a failure losing. I honestly, it, it, I consider it sort of an asset. It's something, maybe a wound or a, a scar. It's a, it's a good story to tell. And it's a good thing to remember because you're probably not going to do it again. And then it's, you know, yeah, Each one of those mindset. losses that you rack up, you're, it, it's, it's, it's good. It's, it makes it a lot easier as thing. Now we're on that because I can avoid those things. Now it's right. way more wins than losses. Yeah, so. absolutely. Well, and obviously we, I want to get to some of those, some of those failures here in a minute, and I, I know you'll be vulnerable and share those, but you're right. You're building a history. And I loved how you, first off, I thought you were telling my story there for a second with the candy bars and the mowing and until you got to college. And I knew we weren't talking about the same story because I, I, I'm not a college educated person. And so you got me there. The reality though, is this, you're a hundred percent, right? We're talking about, I'm building a history of trial and error. Let me, let me buy some knives and resell them on Craigslist. That's, that's amazing. Selling candy bars at my mom's office. Like I remember all of that. And, uh, and it builds a history, not only of experimenting, but inside I now can look back and go, well, if I can do that, I can do this. And if I could have success with that, even through the failure, right, of, you know, buying some random infomercial information or stuff, what could I do if I really did it? What could I do if I, like, took this thing seriously? What could I do if I created an actual sales process? What could I do if I created a client experience that leaves people knowing that I'm their guy? Like we talked about at the beginning of the podcast. What if I really do this thing? Where before is like, man, if I could do that at nine you know, or 15, stumbling around with my mower, the sky's the limit. I, I really feel like that for guys like you and I, we're just like, dude, I'm just now getting started still. After all the success, I haven't even started really is what it comes down to, right? Yep. So let's jump into some of these good and bad decisions because you kind of alluded to failures and we're definitely going to get there. I want to start with a good decision though. What's well, something that you did that you can look back on? You go, okay, this, this one moment, this one decision, I did it and I do it over and over and over again because it's led me to a lot of where I am today. What is so, so in general, the, the good, I would say a really good decision and I don't know, perhaps it's, it's a little bit more general, but, but honestly, believing in myself. Yeah. And again, it, 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 that might be cliche, but the being able to depend on, on myself 
especially if you can't necessarily depend on other people. Yeah. Even if you have a good, a great support group around you, you know, if you're, if you're not, to you. yeah, if you can't trust yourself, that's right. you can't depend on yourself, then, you know, I, I don't know that you're going to get as far as you possibly could. So, that's right. you know, the, the focus on, on development, challenging myself and then believing in myself, that, that would be, I would say a decision that has, has really propelled me into all of the things, all of the successes that I've had. And it's, it's literally just choosing choosing you, yeah. you know, I, I love to, to give back and share my experiences and help others. The only reason I'm able to do that is because I've sort of focused on, you know, making sure that I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm doing well. I'm focused right. on progressing and getting better. If I, if I didn't make that, that, that choice on myself, I wouldn't be able to do those other things. So it, right. it might seem sort of counterintuitive or selfish, but I, I don't believe it's that, Yeah, you know, that decision has, has, has paid, he paid dividends and helped, yeah. you know, family, friends, and the, you know, the charities and causes that we give back to. So exactly. yeah, yeah, the cup can't overflow if the cup's empty, right? Yeah. I mean, in essence, and you got to take care of yourself, you got to take care of your family. And then from that nucleus, everything flows out. And so I think it's a great principle. My follow-up question to you on that, Jesse, would be, okay, so believe in yourself. Like we all have heard that before, even the way that you said it was like, yes, like, I'm kind of like ready to beat my chest and run through a wall, you know, like, oh, I really was like, okay, choose me. Okay, fine. What's something super practical that you did or what can the listener do right now? I need to believe in myself more. How do I do that? What does that look like today? So the being on this podcast, listening to this podcast, for example, education is a lifelong pursuit. It doesn't right. matter if it's, it's formal or something that's, that's been cobbled together. You know, you said you didn't go to college. I wouldn't have any idea. Obviously, you're you're very bright, well articulate, successful. The college aspect of things doesn't really matter as much as choosing to learn, choosing to continue to exactly. gain knowledge. That is 100% the, in my opinion, the most important aspect of things. If you're not continuing to progress, you're stagnant and you're not going to to succeed or develop. You can only get so far if that that learning mindset isn't there. So, you know, it's it's one thing that I try to to instill in friends and family and coworkers. It's like, look, you know, we're we're doing great. We can always do better. It's not that I'm getting down on you or anything like that. It's that, you know, we we've we've hit hit this level. Let's let's take it to this level. Go. There's absolutely so. no reason why we can't. So, you know, that having that mindset is, uh, is extremely important. And yeah, that's, that's the, the number one. I'll, you know, I'm always reading new books, always listening to new podcasts, or watching podcasts, always trying to learn. You only have so much time in the day, especially when you're working a bunch, trying to grow. I mentioned to you before we started recording, it's more vegetables instead of junk food. So that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Believing in yourself obviously can look like filling what you need, like you gave the reference of being able to give out and the and the even the example of the cup there. I love the learn it all spirit. We, we've got a, a member in our group, big GC, not actually very far from you, multiple hundreds of millions, like just a, a just a fantastic business, wonderful brand, just super great person. You know, like when you just meet somebody, and you're like, dang, dude, I want to be like you. You know? <laughs> and so it's like, man, when I can rub shoulders with a guy like that or a guy like that wants to be part of a like my mastermind group, I'm like, okay. We got some we got some good stuff going on here because 100%. a guy like that that says, be a learn it all. Don't be a know it all. Be a learn it all. And he's like constantly putting himself in a situation where he's the low man on the totem pole. We had a we had an event a few months ago actually here at my house. And he walks in. Nobody really knows that, like they all know, like all the, you know, 30, 40 other business owners in the group, they all know, but they don't really know like I know, because I've had some deep conversations with him, you know. And you would, you would just never know. He walked in. He's curious. He's asking questions. The guy that just crossed over a million who like just skirted into the group has no idea who he's talking to. And actually what happens is that this guy is asking this guy all the questions because he knows why he's there. And he maybe yep. doesn't need to know like practically, you know, what I need to do in the business. But he showed up because he wanted courage. He wanted energy. He's like the guy that just transferred over a million or they just got over a million bucks for the first time. He's got some battle scars. Like you mentioned earlier, he's like, I want to hear the stories. I want to hear like, cause I want to walk away and go back to my team, my big business. And I want to take the juice, right? Cause yep. that might be what he's, uh, what he's, what he's after. So it, my point is, is that what you're saying, believe in yourself, kind of know, I mean, what angles to take that in, but, but being a learn it all, as you mentioned, 
is a super easy, practical way. Podcast books, getting around people, like you start leveling up and you start realizing, man, I don't really know much, actually. There's always something new to learn. I mean, in, in the way, how fast things are changing, especially with, you know, the adoption of technology, AI, all that. It's, right. you know, there's, there's a lot of competitors that we, we deal with. One of the reasons why we have success is because we're not analog anymore. You know, we've, we've cut out a lot of the clerical work, the overhead, the right. additional folks that used to be, you know, having to, to do things. Yeah. We've automated it. We've we've we removed a lot of the human error and right. has made the customer experience much more streamlined and, and better for them. Those are things that, you know, we have learned because we choose to continue trying to progress and get better. You know, even if you are doing 30 million a year, you guys might be doing it old school and you could be doing 60 million a year if you just tweak a couple of things. This little guy that just crossed a million, they already know that because they're starting brand new. They're starting fresh. They're learning new things. So, so yeah, for sure. It's... Regardless of where you're at, I don't think you've ever arrived. There's always something new to learn, especially if, even from someone that you might think is 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 back there. Oh yeah, you know. yeah. So. It, it's it. You you mentioned it before we started. For the listener, I'm going to talk to the listener right now. I'm going to I'm going to scoot Jesse to the side here. I was talking to Jesse about promoting himself and talking about how great he is before the show started. He goes, I, you know, I might wrestle with that a little bit, Chaz. I, you know, like I, I hear you, but. That's never really been my approach to toot my own horn. And I think actually a lot of people that listen to the show, for sure, the guys that are in my mastermind group were like this because tooting my horn, okay, well, what does that mean? Okay, yes, I need to let people know about me. We need to, we need to be, I need to grow. But having to learn it all or that humility to kind of know like where I came from, to be respectful of that, to be respectful of you and to like do business yet still not be like overbearing, I think is like a little bit of a niche, you know, people. And it's like, these are the, these are the real genuine ones over here. And it's actually, that's who I want to be around. I don't know if you would agree with that or not, but. 100%. It's, uh, I, th I think, well, you have the, the sign on the back, stay humble and hustle. I mean, that's, a, a, it's, right. it's a, it's a pretty good thing to stick to 100%. And you know, it's, it, it's good to be outgoing, but, yeah. and it, it, but you don't, you don't want to have someone that's, that's overbearing or, or controlling, or right. again, the know-it-all that's. No one knows it all. If you, if you have someone that, 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 that comes across as, as arrogant. You know, I, I don't know. It's for me, at least it's a turnoff and it's, it's not as easy to, to sort of mind meld or, or, or find a, a common ground. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I'd rather well, listen. Let's, so let's flip the script here and talk about one of those failures. You mentioned there's, there was lots of them. What was a bad decision that you made that you can share that might be applicable for the listener to stay like, Hey, stay clear pothole coming. You know, what, what is it? So the, I'll, I'll give you a couple. One is. The first one, and I learned this early on, is don't give up too early. I had a, starting off, it was kind of, again, one of those those little those entrepreneurial tangents. I had uh, come up with a, a product that, because I, I'm a, a scuba diver, and this was a, a scuba okay. diving piece of equipment, completely unrelated to all this other stuff that we're doing, yeah. but came up with a, a design on for, for one of these components and had a provisional patent, a working prototype, and had it sort of going, chugging along, it was very plugged into the industry and, and had all these things kind of going for me. I was getting all this like really good feedback. And then I got one person that I respected that was like, nah, I don't really know about that. And I just gave up. Mm. And I am, I, I kick myself for not sticking to it. Sure. And I may revisit it down the road when I'm a little bit less busy, but that, yeah. That was a learning experience where I, I, you know, having a little bit of negative feedback and then just kind of stopping before, you know, it, taking the, the no that it's, it's like all of the things that I, that now, you know, a, a decade and a half later, right. I, I, I regret and I, I, I give myself a, a lot of grief for it because it was a, it was a huge mistake. It was something that could have paid dividends and it, even if it didn't, it was a, it would have been a cool process to continue to learn and progress as I went down the road and I, I gave up on it too early. So one thing, again, going back to, you know, like believe in yourself and all that, you know, re regardless of what it's stick with it, yeah. there, there is a lot of naysayers out there. There's a probably butcher it, but a, a kind of a, a Texan saying like uh, any jackass can kick down a barn, but it takes a carpenter to build one. Yeah, um, okay. You know, you get a lot of negative cr feedback, but yeah. you know, it, it's, 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 it seems harder. It's a better choice to, to, you know, 
pursue, to do. You, you know what you're doing. Stick with it. Don't listen to the haters. And that was a that was a, a learning experience for me. Now you know we we push through. We uh, we we don't we don't we don't take the the negative feedback might be great to to tweak things, but certainly sure. not give up on anything. That's yeah. a big one. That's sort of a, a more high guess high level or esoteric concept, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. And if you, we can we can talk about that a little bit more. I've also got another one that's a little bit more. Yeah, give it to us. Well, and and let me let me let me say this to the listener. What Jesse just gave to you is literally in Think and Grow Rich as one of the 31 reasons for failure, lack of consistency or lack of persistence. And so some of it comes down to, you mentioned earlier, ADD, I think most, most entrepreneurs diagnosed or undiagnosed, we have this ability to go, you know, lots of things all at once, lots of projects. I want, I, you know, like I can do a lot of things. So I think, and, and so I think that some of that's just us and recognizing that we have this tendency to maybe like start something and then kind of let it fall and then, and then jump to the next thing. But the actual like in their nitty gritty persistence that you're talking about is a development. Like you, you, you work that muscle. And so I'd love to give that to you if you want to speak on that for a second and we can move on to your next one. But Think and Grow Rich talks about this. I mean, it is the number one success principle book, period. And, and if, if he's going to list it as one of the reasons people fail is that you can't stick with it. I'm going to listen to Jesse on this one and say, hey, hey, bro, before you give up, I'm not saying that you, you don't transition or you don't pivot away from things. I think that we're saying the same thing. Like there yeah. are, there are sometimes you gotta, you gotta listen to Mr. Wonderful and you gotta take it out back and shoot it. Right. But maybe not today. Yeah. Maybe you need to press a little harder before you do that. Would you agree? Absolutely. It's, and it, it does not come naturally. At least right. it didn't for me. It was one of those things, again, sort of pushing outside the comfort zone, getting beyond right. certain, certain things. And again, it's a, it was a limitation that I was putting on myself. Right. And as a result, you know, it, nothing really came of it or at least not yet it's yeah. and it it's 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 a good it's a good thing to practice it's necessary yeah now i kind of i've gotten to the point where i i like to now i i look for those things that sort of make me feel a little like yeah. queasy or uncomfortable That's um, right. because then i i know I'm, i know i'm in the zone i know i've found where i need to be in order to be progressing it's after after doing it for years or challenging myself, I seek it out. If I if I'm not feeling that, then I'm like, what am I doing wrong? Something's something's amiss. I'm too comfortable, and I'm almost having the the opposite of reaction, which is great. This is where I want to be. Exactly. What was so, that yeah. second failure that you mentioned? I wanna I wanna definitely squeeze that in here. Okay. Um, so the yeah, the, the second that. failure, and this is again a little bit more I suppose constructive or whatever. I jumped in on a business venture that with someone that the 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 concept or the business itself was great the partner was terrible i learned that the hard way and going into a partnership most of these businesses i start on my own by myself this one it was an existing business and i bought into it and this was a guy that it was kind of a friend of a friend didn't know him as well as i probably should have just what I could asked around the due diligence, I suppose was lacking. The, the guy was a complete failure. As a result, the business was, was struggling. I, I learned later, unfortunately, that the guy that I bought out was the one that was, was I wish should have been my partner. For sure. Um, For sure. That was a huge mistake. Yeah. You know, going into a partnership, whether you're buying into a company or starting it from the beginning, I would, I would say, know that person, set, set those guidelines and those boundaries, make sure that everybody has expectations set, right? Know who you're getting in business with, because it's like a marriage. And if you, if you choose the wrong person, that's tough. It, it, it becomes a drain, a time suck for resources and money. It was a, it was a mistake that I will not make again, yeah. but definitely something to kind of keep in mind for the future. So yeah, absolutely. Great, great stuff. And I think that that's applicable picking the right person, even hiring the right person. I mean, people in general, obviously can can disappoint. It doesn't mean that we're always going to pick those things perfectly. But um, I think that's a great, great tactic there. I want to move on to our speed round here. I want to come at you in a little different angle. My first one's always the same here. And it's a KPI question. I say it like this, if you can only pick one thing to track forever and ever, Jesse, what would that one thing be? Profit and loss. Okay. I'm just kidding. Why? Yeah. <laughs> hey, look, I've had I've had a few hundred people say that. So <laughs> no, no, it's a the, the P and L. I'd say is obviously pretty important. That's something that you know, if you're your CPA or whoever you have doing it, 
isn't doing it, that's kind of a something that I would say is is necessary. But that's kind of an obvious thing. I don't I don't want to okay. I don't want to go without. Okay, um, where are we going? The this one I really like, and it's unsolicited customer feedback. Mm-hmm. So, and I say unsolicited because. I want to get genuine, honest opinions from how we are doing things. Now, I mentioned earlier that, you know, we're, we're very customer centric, we're, we're value focused, we're developing right. relationships that we want to keep beyond, you know, just one transaction Yep. and, and having that feedback, whether it's, it's good, that's awesome because we know we're on the right track. The bad stuff also great because it's actionable and we're getting it from, from someone who is, who just experienced what we, what we've sort of provided for them. Sure. Sometimes it's, it's difficult to sort of see the forest from the trees when you're in it, you might not even be realizing that you're overlooking something that's very important right. and getting that feedback from the customer, the, the person that has just received the, that, that experience or that product from you is, is, is a big one. And the, the unsolicited customer feedback is, is inf- incredibly important as we build and improve our businesses. Yeah, I, I agree with you. It's interesting that you would pick unsolicited and because there's not really a way to get it. <laughs> and so is that even a measurement of like, if we're not getting any, is that like something that you pay attention to? If we're not getting any, I, th- I would say that's also a sign that something needs to change. Uh, yeah. You know, it, it might be great. Everybody's busy, right? Very rarely are you going to get customer feedback unless the experience was fantastic or absolutely terrible. And typically if someone's upset, you're going to get feedback more often than you would if it's fantastic. Sure. So with a, with a company that has a lot of really good reviews, really good feedback, that's usually a good sign. That's, I mean, that's typically how I, if I'm trying to search for, for someone yeah. that, you know, for, for a product or service, I'm going to, I'm going to do a little bit of research. I'm going to see how they're rated. Do they have good, good reviews? Yeah. Um, and is the substance of those reviews good or does it look like they just stuffed them with, you know, a bunch of garbage or friends or family or something like that? No, like are these, are these real reviews? So it's, I would say that's, that's important. Now we do, we do ask for feedback, but the, the unsolicited stuff is, is the best in my opinion. So if you're, if you're, if you're getting the feedback, fantastic. If you're not getting any feedback, you need to make an adjustment because that in of itself is probably a sign that you're, you're not on the right track. So yeah, very good. Jesse, what book would you recommend, or maybe even a resource? You mentioned that you're a big podcast guy. What resource would you recommend for a business owner who's looking at? Well, this podcast is great. Like I mentioned before, we started recording the, co- this, the content that I love about your podcast in particular is a lot of the things that we discuss is actionable. So, you know, yeah. for someone that's getting started, it's, it's good stuff because there are actual things that like, you know, in, in my position, whether, you know, you're the six figure to seven figure or seven to eight, whatever, you know, there are things that everybody can learn from it. Right. Another podcast I really like is, is Tim Ferriss show. Yeah. That's a little bit sort of more, I guess, conceptual or, or, but mm-hmm. it's, it's still very motivating. Yeah. Again, I'm, I'm more about the vegetables than the, than the, the junk food. That's right. There, there are a couple of books that I, I liked. Okay. One is range. I have it right here. Why generalists triumph in a specialized world by David Epstein. Okay. That one I really liked. I, I read it last year and it, it kind of, it, it stuck with me because he turned the, the concept that, that a lot of people think of, you know, if I wouldn't really want to get really good at one thing or, or I want to be great at, at X, I got to just really focus on, on that one thing and, and sure. drill down deep. And that, that book gives a lot of examples and this is, it kind of, I don't know, maybe it, it, it's, it spoke to me a lot more just the way I am, but I'm, I'm all over the place as we talked about. And I, I consider myself kind of a jack of all trades, maybe a master of none, but what I have noticed is a lot of the, the different concepts or, or things that I've found entertaining or intriguing or interesting, they, they, there's sort of this cross pollination aspect of things where right. something over here impact something over here and they come together in, in a way that might be unexpected, but it's very helpful. Yep. And, and that book kind of goes into how, how, how kind of the culmination of learning in, in different yeah. things, whether that's competitive or, or otherwise, it really spoke to me. I think it's a great book. Great. Another one that's a little bit different would be Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. Okay. Um, yeah. 
easy read. It's only like a hundred pages, but I'm a, a, a believer in the, the stoic philosophy and those sort of things that are instilled and necessary, you know, the, the, the perseverance, sticking with something, getting through it, that pain, you know, he's, he's uh, the emperor, the emperor, I mean, of, of, of Rome, one of the best of the Pax Romana, you know, a, a king of Kings, if you will. So I would right. say. If you're, if you're watching this podcast, that'd probably be a pretty good book to read. So Yeah, yeah, that's great. I appreciate that perspective and even the usage of uh, the king there because you're right. There's different levels, right? And 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 I think that we all recognize that and, and we're all trying to get to the next level, whatever that is for each one of us. What are your thoughts on intentionally networking or masterminding with other entrepreneurs? Yeah, it's it kind of seems like a no-brainer, obviously. I, I prefer to, if I can, try to be in a room where I... And I feel like the dumbest one, if you will, and because I want to learn some stuff. I want to challenge myself. Yeah. That's, that's kind of where I, I, I like to go. I'll be, you know, in a seminar tomorrow for the next three days. Yeah. Um, it's you, you've always got something to learn pursuing that mindset, meeting with people that are, are like-minded, um, right. even if it's not in, in the same industry per se, right. You know, like what we were mentioning before the podcast, the business in general there are some concepts that are applicable to everything you know yeah. your foundational things they 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 can be applied to to all sorts of stuff and that's it's it's incredibly important to to be meeting new people and 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 learning new things and getting out there with someone that uh, you know even beyond those podcasts is fantastic because uh, chatting with you is 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 fun and uh, yeah we do have a lot of similar stuff going on and it's um it's inspiring, honestly. Yeah. It get, gives me a little bit of juice to to go out and keep keep doing more. So that's right, that's right. Yeah, that that last point that you made there, even in a scenario like this where we get to rub shoulders for just a few minutes here today, it, it can give you sometimes just the juice that's necessary for just another day to keep going. Like that persistence that you talked about, and <clears throat> it's funny that it, it as entrepreneurs we don't really have people like that. I, I at least I found in my story, it's like. I operated at a certain frequency where, you know, my, my buddies, you know, or the guys that I knew at church or the guys that I knew just, it just, there's just a gap, man. Like, let's just be honest. Like, I'm just not like them and that's okay. Like I'm, there's nothing ab about me that's better or about them. That's worse. It's just, I'm different. <laughs> You're different. Okay. Yep. We're together. Yeah. We're the same. We're not the same as them. Okay. So fine. So I want to find people who are like me. Not so that I can keep a narrow, like, this is only what I believe, but I want to be around people who are thinking big and going after multiple businesses or going after even one business. But like, how do we take it to a hundred X? And it's like, okay, well, if I can run guys like that, that are like me, then it's like, I start, like, you know, compounding, um, you know, effort, like really, really quickly, because even if I'm just in the room and I tell Jesse, I'm going to do something and uh, I know he's going to be in the room the next time. And I haven't done it yet. Like I, I'm gonna stay up all freaking night to get it done, whatever it was, or or you know, over the year. Yep. There's just so much impact when you get around the juice, as yeah. you call it. I well, love it. Yeah. Get, getting back to the uh, the competitive aspect of things. If I if I can see that you're doing it, then you know I feel that I could probably do it, or at least I can. Sh I should try. That's um, right. It's, That's right. You know the the guy that that did the sub four minute mile or whatever. Right. Once he, he crossed that barrier, then within months, someone else did it, but it had never been done before. It's like, yep. as long as you can see someone else is doing it, that's that inspiration. It's in itself allows you to, to, to rock and roll. So it's, yeah, it's, it's important. It's important to be around people that are like-minded and pursuing to, to do better, go further. That's right. I got a question for you that might be a little bit unique. Entrepreneurs that you know, have a family are listening. Some, some don't have a family, but there's this dynamic of obsession that we all relate to. We've talked about it actually here on the show, how we go all in on things. How is it that you've been able to go all in on all these things that you have your hand to, but yet still have those other values and, and be able to press into those other areas of your life at the same time? I would say it's not easy. Especially at first, especially when you're you're starting out and you're you're grinding and you know you're wearing a bunch of hats. That's right. It, it's 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 definitely not easy to have a a a good balance. Uh, certainly, when you're younger, you got more energy. You can uh, you can get out there and really grind. Having a good so support group also very important. You know, a lot of my success, I wouldn't be able to do it without my wife. Um, right. She she hustles herself. She you know she she 
she she busts her butt and uh without without her or support i it wouldn't it wouldn't be possible to to do what i've done and you know the the thing that's important is it's not always like that necessarily at least at the beginning when you're when you're starting and and, and really having to to sort of make sacrifices i mean social life is out the window but you know when you when you've got your your eye on the prize that the goal it's important and and now as you know, we're, we're kind of gotten to this a level that we're at. I, I have, you know, I've hired people to do a lot of these things for me. I'm, even though it seems like I'm doing a lot more, I have more free time, more ability to, to spend with my two young children, my wife. It's the, it, you know, when we talked about the, 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 the little, the critical mass rolling that little snowball that gets bigger, you know, the, the, it's now paying dividends and I'm seeing it and the proof is in the pudding and that's inspirational, but also, you know, as I transition, I'm turning 40 this year, it's, it's a big one. I'm a little scared about it. And I, I also, you know, instead of continuing to really grow or, or do new things, I'm, I'm, I've set a goal for myself to kind of transition, to be a little bit more, you know, give back, have more time yeah. with friends and family and enjoying sort of the pursuits of all of these things that are, are, are sort of a means to an end. And yeah. it's, it, it's, it's, it's great because again, I'm, I'm seeing it, it's rewarding, yeah. but those, those sacrifices initially are important and you got to stick with it. Don't get discouraged because they, they eventually pay off. So yeah, you, you gave some really, really great dynamics there between the support of your wife, as well as just I think because I think of the balance <clears throat> word, you know, the dirty little balance word. It, it, first of all, it doesn't exist. Like you said, at the, especially at the beginning, is that you kind of just have to get on the same page. You have to get into alignment. And maybe there's certain seasons where you're dialed in here or dialed in there, but that takes alignment. It takes her being on the same page. And then obviously along the way, you, you're doing things to honor her and still be a good dad, all that fun stuff. So thank you for that. I got one last question here for you. All right, let's hear it. You said you're turning 40 this year. I want to know, Jesse. If you could whisper in the younger Jesse's ear, what would you say? Try harder, faster, sooner. That's going back to that that initial mistake that I'd made. Yeah. And in hindsight, I, I and it doesn't only have to be that one specific instance, but starting earlier and believing in yourself and and trying, don't taking no. Those things they they they'd be paying even more dividends. Who knows where I'd be if if I'd started even earlier? But it's tough. It's not easy to to just kind of. Flip that switch. Again, if you're starting early, that's great. If you're listening to this podcast, you're already on the right path. It's, you know, but that, that'd be it. Start, start earlier, start sooner, keep grinding, keep learning. Because honestly, I'm having a blast. It's fun. Yeah. It might not seem like it. I'm working a heck of a lot more than I was for anybody else. But, uh, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm liking it. This is, uh, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. So I love what you said. Get started, you know, sooner, faster, better, stronger. You didn't say get started younger. You said get started sooner. And so for even the guy who's 41 listening right now, right? You're like, go dude, go do it. Don't wait, do, do it. it. Right. Yes, absolutely. It's, it's again, b believing yourself, doing, making the choice. I don't I think part of it, you know, I had a, I had a really cushy job, but one of the things I was, I was an insurance adjuster for, for a period of time, extremely beneficial for what we're doing now to have that kind of That's knowledge. Right. That's right. It's not an easy job. Yeah, but it had some some really good benefits. Very cushy. I could, you know, you're even though you're you're grinding away for someone else, you have a nice safety net. It's kind of comfortable. It's safe. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. You know, I I it's not my personality. I, I could not be doing it still. I, that's I, I'm glad that I left. But certainly making a jump to out of the industry as I was kind of learning and, and pursuing to a commission only job from right. something that had great health benefits, great insurance, all that kind of stuff. That's right. So you got to <laughs> but make some money. You're, you eat what you kill. Exactly. 100%. And that, you know, that, that was a leap, but, yeah. but, but by doing it, believing in myself that I could do it, it yeah. sort of has spun into all these other things that, that, that we're doing now and, and it's worth it. So, yeah. well, Jesse, man, I, I'm sure a guy like you and a guy like myself that have a lot of similarities and differences, but I'm sure we could go for hours in all seriousness and it would be enjoyable for the both of us. You've been incredible, man. Thank you for sharing your story. I want to know how the listener can connect with you. First off, if they're in your area of Texas and they need a roof or they need exteriors, they need solar, 
if they need insurance, like all the things that you got going on, how can they find you? And then if they're a business owner, how can they come find you, pick your brain, you know, get some value that way? So I'm I'm on LinkedIn. If you if you message me on LinkedIn, just look up Jesse Summerlin. There's actually a couple of them in the Metroplex. I'm the uh, the the Jesse Summerlin. Yeah, entrepreneur, investor, father. The if okay. you if you shoot me a message or try to connect, just mention the podcast and I'd be happy to to connect and answer any questions that that anybody would have. And then, yeah, if you happen to be in Metroplex, Dwell Roofing and Exteriors is the uh, is the main company. I have some others, and I'm sure when 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 this goes up, we'll uh, you'll list them for me, which I really appreciate. Yeah, of course, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Happy to help. Happy to to you know give back and yeah. you know help other folks on their journey because it's been fun. It's 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 not over. It's still going. Still learning. That's right. So, um, so yeah, grateful, grateful, but not done. Jesse, yes, you've been for having me. absolutely incredible. Thank you for being here. Blessings on your family, on your businesses, all the things that you have put your hand to here in 2023. Jesse. Thanks for being here, man. Thanks, bud. Thank you for listening to Gathering the Kings today. I hope that you were able to pull out a few nuggets to go apply into your business right away. More importantly, though, I hope that you're realizing that it takes more to be successful than just being by yourself, doing it all on your own, carrying the weight all by yourself. What I have realized, not only in my own journey from multiple businesses and multiple different industries, and now interviewing literally over two or 300 other very successful seven, eight, and nine figure business owners, is that it's tough to do it alone. And so Gathering the Kings literally exists to bring together successful entrepreneurs. In fact, we are putting together 1,000 kings, specifically who are grateful, but not done. We're intentionally assembling kings who fight tooth and nail for their business, family, and communities. And here's what we believe, that in the pursuit of excellence in those areas, that it ignites within us the responsibility to govern power and forge a lasting legacy. So if that relates and, and resonates with you, and you know that you need people around you, sharp, qualified, other very successful business owners, I want you to go to gatheringthekings.com. I want you to take a look at what we're doing and see if it makes sense for you to be part of our pursuit to 1,000 Kings. Talk soon.